Today's first speaker is Pierre Poloniat from Columbia University, who will be discussing formal verification of blockchain Byzantine fault tolerance. Pierre? Uh, so actually it's uh, Vincent who will be doing the presentation today. So yeah, uh, Pierre um, used to be um, a student at University of Sydney uh, before he joined Columbia. And uh, this is mostly his work that I'm gonna be presenting, but unfortunately he couldn't make it today. Okay, so uh, is blockchain secure? Uh, you might know that some blockchain assume synchrony, of course, depending on the way you look at it, whether they don't ensure finality or uh, they assume some synchrony in order to get this, this finality. Um, so finality is necessary if you want to reach the classical notion of consensus that we find in distributed computing literature because we need a termination at some point. Uh, so there are a bunch of uh, blockchains that would rely on this assumption for different things. Uh, and the problem is that if a hacker uh, can delay messages uh, while the system assumes synchrony, then it could potentially steal assets by, for example, double spending. So this is a, a key issue in, in blockchain systems, as you can imagine. So just uh, to cite a few uh, attacks that appeared in the literature, uh, you know, there are several um, attacks that exploit this phenomenon of delaying messages, right? If, for example, you can delay and messages in a blockchain like Ethereum, we could potentially reorder the transactions. And this could lead to front running attacks, for example. There are other attacks that consist of trying to partition the network into um, two groups where the mining power is balanced, right? So that they have roughly the same amount of mining power and this allow um, a hacker with a very small mining power to do a double spending attack and so on and so forth. You can imagine that you use BGP hijacking in order to create some delays in the network and this might affect Ethereum again. Um, and there exists the attack of the clones that relies on the same idea where essentially you partition the, the, the group of validators and the proof of authority consensus in order to try to double spend, right? So it, it's not uncommon to see this kind of vulnerabilities uh, that rely on this synchrony assumption. And by synchrony here, I, I mean, maybe it's important to, to, to clarify what I mean here is that there is a known bound on the time it takes to deliver any message in the network, right? So all these attacks consist of trying to delay the messages such that the bound is exceeded. But there are some really interesting algorithms um, that uh, were also motivated by the blockchain um, uh, space uh, and, uh, and applications that tolerate asynchrony, which means that they do not assume synchrony. And uh, for, we can cite at least the honey badger of BFT protocols and uh, the BIT um, protocol, okay? So these do not assume synchrony, which means that they are not uh, vulnerable to this type of attacks. So this is interesting. However, they rely on the same randomized consensus algorithm. And this consensus algorithm was published at uh, POTC, which is one of the biggest, uh, probably the biggest uh, distributed computing conference and got the best paper award. Uh, but uh, there is a liveness issue in this uh, in this protocol that I will talk about in a minute. So this is the paper, and uh, and this uh, asynchronous randomized algorithms that I talked about rely on an underlying binary consensus that is randomized that is presented in this paper. Roughly speaking, and I won't go into too many detail here. Um, I just want to outline outline the, the the execution of this algorithm. It relies on a, on a while true loop. Uh, of course, at which point you can, uh, at some point you can exit the while true loop at line 10, if you decide. Uh, but it, this while true loop consists of uh, trying to refine an estimate that is called EST that you can see on line one, for example. And it will do so by in each iteration of this uh, while true loop uh, by BV broadcasting, which is a, a broadcast primitive that is called binary value broadcasting. And it has some very nice property and uh, a random common coin. Right. So a random common coin is a, is a, a way to invoke a, a pseudo random generator uh, and uh, output at any correct process, the exact same value, right? So it can be invoked by multiple processes, but it will return the same value uh, at the same invocation, right? For all these correct processes. So it's a, it's a very interesting algorithm. And, um, and, it, uh, and you can see on the right-hand side, the BV broadcast uh, pseudo code. But there is a problem in this algorithm. The problem is that it lacks termination, which means that there is a possible infinite execution where the consensus algorithm will never terminate. 
And um, a simple counter counter example that we present relies on four nodes where you have t equals one, which means that you have one failure in the system. And the rest in the rest of the talk, I will refer to t as the maximal number of uh, failures you can have in your system. These failures are Byzantines, right? They are arbitrary failures. And you have this um, n minus t processes that invoke the common coin, and because of um, Byzantine for tolerant common coin implementation, you need to return, the common coin has to return when you have n minus t invocation. And then the Byzantine participants, which is the faulty participants that can behave arbitrarily, which can represent the hacker if you want, will exploit the outcome of the common coin in order to slow down selected messages. If he does so, then he can make sure that the correct participants, there are three of them, right? Because we have four participants in this consensus, will move from having estimates 0, 0, 001 to estimates 110 and so on and so forth. So they will just loop in this from one round to another. Well, they will change their estimate from 0, 0, 001 to 110, 0, 001, 110 and so on and so forth. Right, so there is um, a case where there is this infinite execution and this is enough to show that determination cannot be ensured. The nice thing is, and I want to uh, highlight this, um, there exists provably correct alternatives to this protocol, right? Um, one that is remarkable is that the same author came up with an extended version of this paper, this algorithm, that they presented in Journal of the ACM in 2015. And this alternative protocol has the same asymptotic complexities uh, as the original protocol, but solves the issue. There is also a, a paper by Kasha and Zalonini, Zanolini that was presented at this, this year, like yesterday, I think, and uh, that also has a provably correct alternatives. The only thing is that I'm not aware of any implementation of this algorithm. So what we decided to do is we decided to create a blockchain that we call the Red Belly blockchain. And the first thing we did is we focused on the consensus protocol. We wanted to tolerate periods of asynchrony. So for those who know, it's more like a partially synchronous model. Um, because we didn't want to have the uh, vulnerabilities I've mentioned in the beginning. The protocol works as follows. So it's very similar to the randomized algorithm, except that we got rid of the, the random coin, right? Instead, what we used is the parity of the round to make sure that uh, we would break symmetry and that the protocol would converge towards a single estimate that would be decided by all the correct processes. Okay, so we really wanted that, we, we needed it in order to reach consensus, right? So that was key. Uh, we built Red Belly blockchain on top of this algorithm that we call democratic BFT. And we, pupled, we published it as um, IEEE security and privacy uh, this year. The BFT is scalable uh, and it actually uses the same technique that was presented in Dandelion, which is the idea of super block optimization. You have a lot of proposers that are proposing their block, but instead of trying to accept the leader block, you just aggregate all the blocks that were proposed into a super block, right? And that's how it scale. As you can imagine, it, you know, it commits a number of proposals that is linear in the number of nodes that participate. Um, so this is the paper that uh, we published this year, uh, but uh, this is great, right? And there are a lot of blockchain that you know, reach very good performances on the paper or, you know, on blog posts or, you know, on online. But how to make sure that the consensus itself is correct, right? It could be, could be wrong. And that might be the reason why we have so good performances. And that leads to uh, this work. So I'm going to go quickly through the related work, just mentioning that there are a lot of very nice ideas uh, that have been, um, that came up since uh, 1999, for example, uh, that consist of exploiting machine assisted proof in order to prove things in a, in a safer way. I'm not saying that these techniques are completely uh, safe, right? Or completely secure as even a model checker needs to be proven correct, but they reduce considerably the risk of having uh, mistakes in the proof of the consensus algorithm, right? So it reduces the risk of having um, double spend. The way we achieve, uh, uh, we did the model checking of our consensus algorithm is as follows. We use a threshold automata representation of our algorithm. So just to have an example, this is a very simple binary value broadcast, you know, abstraction, which is simply broadcasting some estimate. If you receive, if you, if you receive T plus one uh, estimates, um, the same estimate from 
T plus one distinct processes or participants, then you rebroadcast. So it's very similar to reliable broadcast for binary values. If you receive two T plus one identical values from, um, sorry, yeah, identical values from two T plus one distinct processes, then you deliver, right? It means that the, the there is a BV delivery, if you want. And so what we can do is we can represent this algorithm at the bottom that is ex explained in pseudocode as a threshold automaton with nodes and um, transitions, right? So you have local states that are log v0, log v1, that indicates that a process is as, as an input value zero, log v0, or input value one, log v1. And then depending on what happens in the system, you update shared variables uh, that are, for example, B0, which is a shared variable that counts the number of zeros that are being broadcast in this BV broadcast algorithm. If a guard is true, then the action might be taken. Okay, so you have these counters that are shared counters updated by all the correct processes as they execute or as they transition through this automata or automaton. In this case, in, there's only one. What you can see is that this automaton is symmetrical, so I don't need to care that much about uh, one side, and I will just focus on the side where you have the initial value zero. Okay, nothing has been broadcast when we are in log v zero. The zero value has been broadcast, and nothing has been a BV delivered when I reach log b zero. I will reach log b zero one, which means that both values and zero and one have been broadcast, but nothing has been delivered yet. The earliest moment where we can transition um, is upon reception of ones from F faulty processes and after B1 ones were broadcast by correct processes. And this is modeled by B1 plus F, which is the uh, actual number of failures, is greater than T, the upper bound on the number of failures plus one. Log, v, log C0 indicates that uh, zero has been broadcast and only zero has been BB delivered both zero and one have been broadcast and only zero has been uh, BV, de BV delivered in log B0. Uh, there is a self loop that will indicate the asynchrony. And finally, um, both zero and one have been broadcast and both have been BV delivered when we reach log C0. So you can see that it's quite simple to model uh, algorithm, distributed algorithm in threshold automaton. So you can express a BV justification, which is one of the properties of this BV broadcast using uh, linear temporal logic, right? As follows, I won't go into the detail because I'm um, running out of time. And uh, what we did is we did the same thing for our consensus algorithm. We obtained this very large uh, threshold automaton on the right-hand side that we decomposed. We split it into two, two uh, automata, one for the BV broadcast and one for the rest. And what we could do is we could, uh, uh, do the formal verification using parameterized model checking, thanks to uh, the Byzantine model checker that has been published at Popol 2017. And we did that, we um, formally verify the agreement, validity and termination, which are the three properties of the consensus in less than 18 minutes, right? So on an MPI cluster, of course, we needed a, a bit of resources to do so. We believe that formal verification of consensus is important for blockchain adoption in secure applications. We illustrated how to prove the safety of the DBFT consensus algorithm used in the Red Belly blockchain. For the liveness proof, I recommend you to look at the follow-up work uh, with my colleagues, um, and uh, which you can uh, scan here. And for future work, we would like to leverage this formally verified consensus algorithm with smart contracts in order to obtain a more secure sharing economy. Um, here is the slide about the, uh, the, the MOOC where I talk about DBFT in more details and the Red Belly blockchain, if anyone is interested to know more. Thank you for your attention.